seven lanes on the front. Squire is making steady progress from the back of the field, but doing it three wide on the turn. Barsak's another one on the move. Soldier songs down that one to blast. Soldier's the back marker. Good evening and welcome once again to the OK Charity Dinner, one of the highlights of the OK Gold Bowl Week. The theme of this evening's dinner is a tribute to Aquanaut, and we now invite you to sit back and relax as we relive the triumphs and tragedies of this great horse's career. It all began on April the 2nd, 1986, when Aquanaut made his debut in a maiden juvenile sprint over 1200 metres at Milneton. Bookmakers cautiously priced the son of Favras up at 5 to 2, but a rush of support saw his odds cut to 7 to 10. And the confidence proved spot on. Aquanaut must be three lengths off the early leader. Racing up towards the 800, Contra Candy has the lead towards the outside. Eastern Summer races prominently. Double Jun is just off the leaders, well enough placed. Then comes Chitter Chatter, local love. Aquanaut score three lengths off them, then Gentleman at Arms, Newtown, and Spring Air the trailer. Racing up towards the 400, Double Jin, now moving smoothly, comes forward to grab the lead. Along the inside, Chitter Chatter, Aquanaut, moving closer all the while. They're racing up to the 300, Double Jin, the leader from Chitter Chatter, Aquanaut along the inside, these are three concerned. Double Jin along the outside, Chitter Chatter just inside of that, and Aquanaut right along the inside. Double Jin with the advantage, Aquanaut closing fast down the inside, and Aquanaut has come through to win going away. Racing Mark, judging from the betting, you were obviously confident that Aquanaut would win first time out. Yes, Graham, I was confident. He had shown enough to win. He was still immature, but the class was already there. At that stage, did you have any idea that Aquanaut could develop into a champion stayer? Yes, no, I knew he'd stay, and as I say, he was showing a lot of class, and there was still a lot of scope for improvement. He was a November foal, and at that stage, he was still immature. Two unplaced runs followed Aquanaut's scintillating debut, but as an early three-year-old he struck winning form with a vengeance, winning four races in succession between August and December 1986. Then the equine flu struck, and Aquanaut, with a career record at that stage of five wins from just seven starts, was sidelined along with the majority of horses in South Africa. Mr. Mace, before the equine flu broke out, you and your partners obviously knew that you had a really good horse on your hands, and the equine flu must have caused you some anxious moments. Yes, it did. Um, particularly as Mark had already indicated to us, he thought we had a potential Gold Cup horse on our, on our hands. Mark, to what extent did the equine flu appear to affect Aquanaut at that stage? Well, he, he got the flu, but he was such a big, strong, healthy horse that it never affected him much, and it never seemed to get him down. Any doubts as to whether Aquanaut had fully recovered from the flu were dispelled when on May the 23rd, 1987, he gained his sixth career victory at the expense of the well-performed Gitano. Diving followed then by Chelsea Pirate. Along the inside, Superfly. Aquanaut gonna make a bit up the outside. Still got five to find on Gitano, who's traveling comfortably in the center. They come towards the 500, Gitano with the advantage. Towards the outside, Chelsea Pirate. Aquanaut closing steadily up the outside. Back along the inside is waiting game. They come to the 300, Gitano starts to feel the whip now. Chelsea Pirate and Aquanaut start to close in. Gitano with the advantage. Chelsea Pirate closing. Aquanaut coming late up the outside. Gitano, Chelsea Pirate, Aquanaut closing late. It's going to be close as they race the line. Aquanaut, Gitano, here comes the line. Aquanaut, one of the knows from Gitano. That victory over Gitano must have brought a great sense of relief to you. 
we found it totally staggering. It's the only way I can describe it, and a great relief to know after the equine flew that everything was back on track and the horse was in top form. Mark, you purchased uh, Aquanaut at the 1985 National Yearling Sales for what turned out to be the bargain price of 30,000 Rand. What caught your eye as a yearling? Well, Graham, he was a big horse. He had a very big chest, which gives us a lot of lung space. And his confirmation was very good. He had a lot of bone. And uh, his pedigree is one of, the, one of the best in the book. Oscar, your family bred uh, Aquanaut at the Normandy Stud. Uh, you obviously got to know him quite well as a foal. Did he appear superior in any way on the farm? Well, he always was a very big horse, even though he was a late foal. Um, as he developed to yearling stage, he was just very, very backward. He was always a very good walker, very athletic type of horse. Um, that was basically that all one could say about him. He had a big frame and he moved very well. After defeating Gitano, Aquanaut was sent to Natal, where he won the Grade 3 Lonsdale by more than three lengths and the Grade 1 Gold Cup in new course record time. But although bred and trained in the Cape, Aquanaut became the darling of the Transvaal racegoers through his exploits in the OK Gold Bowl. His first victory in the spectacular event came on the 17th of October, 1987. Then behind those we have Malun, he's followed by Zampha. Racing outside of Zampha, it's Uncle Percy, then comes Airman, totally bold, and Eli Star, the back marker. Around the turn now, they're homeward bound in the OK Gold Bowl, and Miss Messine is the leader. Voodoo Charm on the outside, Aquanaut moves up along the inside, down the centre of the track, Emperor's Walk, then comes Doubly Sure. Along the inside, Lines of Power, then Brassbar coming through along the inside. Past the 600, and Aquanaut is at the front. On the inside, Brassbar's immediate challenger. Then Lines of Power on the inside of them, comes Malone, Miss Messine behind them. We have on the outside, Colourburst and Doubly Sure, and Zamford Sudden Gold behind those. 300 meters to go now, Aquanaut hanging badly, is shifting over towards the outside and Brass Bar is going there, also hanging very badly. Then behind them we have Zampha, Color Burst on the inside, doubly sure. It's Aquanaut in the OK Gold Bowl with 100 to go and he's running gamely. Aquanaut and Zampha coming with a strong run. Zampha is flying, but Aquanaut has won the Gold Bowl from Zampha. Brass Mark, Bar. what kind of horse was Aquanaut like to work with? Graham, he was a horse that was always full of energy. He had so much nervous energy. We had to have two boys on him all the time. He was a sensible horse, but just he never wanted to stop. He, he never had enough, and uh, he was a pleasure to train. Unlike many other coastal horses, Aquanaut seemed to relish the conditions on the high felt. Why? I think we planned his preparation well for the races. He was given a chance to acclimatize. He had a run before the big race, and uh, he was always right on the day. Aquanaut's supremacy over the marathon distance was confirmed with a facile victory in the Chairman's Handicap at Kenilworth on the 5th of March, 1988. Homeward bound in the Chairman, 600 metres left to go, shakes the light the leader, but Aplonado quick to challenge. Aquanaut's going to make a bid up the inside, all wall towards the outside, bold back starts to run on. Shakes the light the leader, Aplonado, Aquanaut closing steadily down the inside as they come to the 400. Shakes the light, Aplanado, Aquanaut, La Fastidios is running on, they come to the 300 now and Aquanaut hits the front, travelling smoothly, it's Aquanaut carrying too much class for the opposition, gone clear by two, and the weight's not going to stop him this afternoon, he's drawing clear, and Aquanaut confirming he is the country's champion player, draws clear to win it by three, Aplanado battled on for second, just held off La Fastidios, let the team came late for four. In the space of just seven months, Aquanaut had won the Gold Cup at Gravel in Durban, the OK Gold Bowl at Turfentine, and the Chairman's Handicap at Kenilworth in Cape Town. After carrying 58 kilos to victory in the Chairman's, many pundits hailed Aquanaut as the greatest stayer ever bred in this country. How did that make you and your partners feel? We were thrilled and we felt very privileged to be associated with such a horse. Oscar, how did you come to plan the mating for Aquanaut? Well, it was Favaros's first year at stud, and the owners of the stallion were offering quite sizable cash incentives to the breeders of the best horses by Favaros. So we wanted to send what we consider to be two good mares, and we put Aquanauten in force in the first year, which certainly would have got Favaros off to a good start.